Hi, I'm Dave. This is the Cider Baby Pod, and I am with Pornographic Sunset. Hello. Hello, Hello Dave. Dave. Right, introduce yourselves, guys. Left to right, who are you and what do you do? I'm Roger, I'm on the bass. My name is Louis, and I play drums. Hello, I'm uh, Daniel. I'm vocals and uh, samples keyboards. And I'm Dave, I'm the guitarist. Cool. So where are you guys based and where are you from? We are based in uh, Leeds. Um, which is a great city for music. We are from uh, all over the place, uh, all over the country and beyond. Cool. So, sun, uh, Pornographic Sunset, tell me a bit about the band. When did it start? When? How did the magic happen? Uh, this is a long story. It, it is a very long story. <laughs> um, I got all night, it's okay. <laughs> 15 years ago. Uh, yes, so around... Um, 2006, right. after <laughs> several years of um, painting everything black with music, um, so only being very focused on a very narrow set of sounds, I something clicked for me, and I thought, right. oh, it would be nice if I had uh, a side project they just went completely crazy and did everything. And with a bit of humor, uh, trying to mix things up and really uh, trying to bring in the, 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 the whole canvas of what is uh, music, which is so varied. Um, so I sat down, I wrote out a few notes and I thought, okay, I need to start uh, looking for people. And I looked and uh, I got in a room with a few people, you know, trying to, open up the language, trying to make sure that we could really feel free to do whatever we felt like doing. And it didn't work. It, I felt like uh, nobody quite got it. You know, I wanted right. to experiment, I wanted to mix things and uh, it fell apart pretty quickly. Right. So I got, after trying for a while, I got bored and I joined another band. Then the band split up and they tried again to go with the idea of experimentation. So for 12 years, I went through cycles of really trying to get this project going, failing, getting bored, and doing something else. Um, eventually, I joined the prog metal band here in Leeds called uh, Sister Inertia. Yeah. And um, I, my first interaction was uh, in a pub with uh, a charming, intelligent man who was at guitar and his name was Dave. Different one. <laughs> <laughs> so we wrote some music, we played a few gigs. Uh, there was a guy called Louis uh, who was a friend of our drummer and uh, he was a big supporter of the band. He often came to gigs, he suffered a number of injuries at gigs. Uh, and Still it, suffering now. Still <laughs> suffering now. <laughs> <laughs> um, just, just on the stage instead. Then uh, that band split up and I thought, you know what? I think Dave is going to get it. I think Dave is the right person. So I met with Dave and before I could give him my pitch, before I could s s finish explaining um, what I was hoping to do, Dave just said, yeah, of course, I'm in. Um, about then it took us... Uh, I think we went back and wrote. Two of the, actually wrote two of the songs that ended up on the second day, please. Yeah, sure. We wrote a couple of songs straight away. And uh, then uh, we found uh, Roger. And then we had a different drummer for a while. And uh, when we needed a new drummer, we realized that uh, Louis was available. Uh, and that's how we came together. Anything to add? It's a little family. Yeah. We love each other very much. Yeah. We also hate each other that. very much. It's complicated, but uh, very intense. That's what I said on Facebook. No, it's complicated. <laughs> okay, so um, you guys put out uh, the first of a four-chapter story uh, a little while ago. That's correct. And um, the bastard shows his true colours. First EP, yeah. Give me, give me a brief rundown on that one. Sure. Um, as you were saying, the first chapter uh, we have a strong idea for what story we're telling. Mm -hmm. uh, Bastard was our first uh, 
contains some of the first tra first tracks that we wrote together. Um, it's um, as everything will ever do, quite eclectic in its sound. It will go. It goes from hard rock to jazz to surf punk to uh, black metal to goth to oh, reggae God. to a bit of everything. Um, the message that he's trying to get across the story that he's trying to tell is a story of someone who realized that, that they were living a life of lies mm -hmm. so step one they said i will accept no more lies and i will tell no more lies to others but then they okay. realized that that's only the first step and to be fair it's the easiest of the battles ahead the hardest battle is the battle about the lies that one tells to themselves. Yeah. So the EP finishes on that uh, positive note. That, that's the positive message of that first EP. No okay. more lies to the others, but most importantly, I am no longer lying to myself. The mask is off. Um, so yeah, that's the first EP in a uh, nutshell. We get uh, around that EP for a bit then mm. uh, COVID happened uh, so we got a bit stuck anything else to add on Buster? so the second one gold flesh dirt right right uh, so when did this come out this came out on the 10th of december right uh, we have the epa out uh, accompanied by a video for mm -hmm. the leading track uh, self in solution uh, it's on YouTube and uh, it involves me gagging on a banana being pushed down my throat. Okay. Um, it was a fun day. That and, day. Yeah. and inside a rat's cage. Exactly. There, yeah. there are many things. Mostly, yes. there, there are many. There are many terrible things done to me in that video. Yeah, he had loose teeth. Someone punched him. I don't know who. Yeah, someone punched me. Um, I'm sort of naming that. names. Yeah, just pointing fingers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, even end up on, on film, I that, that's so. the thing. I do. <laughs> and to be fair, so let, let's be clear. And I think it's uh, hopefully it's already coming across. We are more than willing to suffer from the art. If I need to lose a tooth for for this, I'm perfectly okay with that, it. That's a royal way, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, we will all suffer. If I suffer, you suffer. What I'm not okay with is being punched when the camera is not rolling. At least wait, wait until it's rolling. Anyway. I feel a bit about that. Don't know why. Don't know why. So this CP, what do we do in this CP? We do goth stuff, we do country stuff, we do progress rock stuff, we do experimental stuff almost punk funk we do psychedelic we do pop uh 80s pop uh monkeys smoking meth yeah there are monkeys uh, smoking drugs um yeah once again there's a bit of everything in this one musically um in terms of the story so the, the previous ep ends with uh, the triumph and the mask is on the floor yeah which is great so now it's time to look in the mirror. The problem is that there are no more lies. And uh, the main character here had spent their whole life looking at themselves through a beautiful layer of uh, self-deception. And now that's gone. And the reflection is there and it's not pretty it's really 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 hard to swallow um so that's what the ep is about is looking at yourself in the mirror and going oh that's who i really am mm -hmm. that's actually not okay and uh, i don't know how to deal with this so the second chapter of the story i'm afraid is rather darker and takes us to a uh, much more difficult place. Okay, yeah, I mean, we, I, I went through the four tracks, just give myself some brief notes to talk to you guys about. I mean, uh, Self and Solutions, the first track, yeah. And this is yep. it's, it's quite a heavy vibe to that actual track itself. But um, yeah, there's certainly a lot of country feel. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so uh, how do you go from being quite so dark and then just throwing that little bit of country in just to so i i think as people we something that i love about this band is that uh, we love music mm. and between the four of us we listen to such a huge breadth of uh, of things and we really genuinely enjoy so much music such diverse music and uh, when we get in a room together uh, someone will start doing something and uh, you know they will start playing as you can see from the hat they could absolutely yeah, I, be I, I, I just try to shoot on country as much as possible <laughs> I, I just want this to be a country band as well, the big one. Are we going well, down that route? <laughs> one section is all I'm getting. Yeah, one section is all I'm getting. So, so and the rest of us are quite open-minded. We don't say no. You know. Everybody, exactly. Nobody says no, and everybody's always coming up with something. We have a huge archive uh, full of little gems of all sorts of uh, genres. And um, I, I'm quite... Uh, organized um, in uh, keeping track of things and uh, yeah we'll keep on reviewing them and uh, think about how things flow together and how they flow together naturally um, and that's how the song wanted to go for us and I fully appreciate that most other people would feel like the song was going to go in a different direction mm. but when we came to the end of that first chorus we stopped we looked at each other and went right we need to go in a different direction here. Do you remember that country jam that we listened to like a couple of sessions ago that we had recorded months and months ago? Why don't we actually try and work it in there? Because it feels like it's the right direction here. Mm. And that's how it happened. Yeah, I think I like the whole stream of consciousness thing that we, that we saw. I think that's like a good way to write, like not overthinking it too much and trying to actually you know, if you actually sort of try to do it with intent, I think sometimes it come across obviously quite fast and that. But I think with with, with us, it's yeah, it just it just happens. And I think that's and for me, I think a lot of the time, just think on paper, no, that that should work. But once we get it in the studio and we get it recorded and and we, we kind of layer it a bit, it yeah, it just it seems perfectly natural now. Mm. I think anyway. Okay, I mean, you've gone, uh, say, from the country vibe to your second song, which has got quite a jazz funk feel to it. I mean, that's quite a leap in one in one different song, really. Uh, then uh, Diabolical. Oh, Diabolical, probably, yeah. Diabolical then is quite accessible yeah. to everybody. So, yep. <sighs> Dead People. I mean, that is <laughs> quite dark, <laughs> to say the least. I mean... The, the whole EP is so artistic in its view and in its vision. And I really congratulate people who've got the vision to do that kind of thing. Um, because it's very easy to just churn out 12 bar blues all the time and sell a couple of records and this, that, and the other. So you must find it quite difficult to um, win over an unsus unsuspecting audience. Um. I uh, guys feel free to disagree and uh, I, I feel like that but well, I'm very proud of our live show I think yeah. we'll have something good once we hit the stage yeah. um, I think finding promoters who are happy to put us on a bill sometimes it's the hardest hardest yeah part. I think you'll probably be right there yeah <laughs> it's because um, you know you, you look at bills and and Possibly also for good reasons, promoters tend to want to have coherent bills. Mm. But uh, we are a very internally incoherent band in many ways. I mean, I, I'd like to think that we are coherently incoherent. Mm. Um, but it can be tricky for us to find promoters who go, yeah, absolutely, I, I know where to put you. Um, when we get some. Yeah, I was, I was also going to say, you know, it's. it's it's funny, that is true, but, but weirdly, and we, we didn't expect this either, but and I don't want to sound like, we don't want to sound full of ourselves, but people really do have a great time at our gigs, you know, people do really enjoy it, and it's not what we expected, it's not what we were probably aiming for or anything like that, but it just happens to work. I, I still remember the first time we played, um, we played live, and 
I think what was most concerned was uh, a track called Immortal, who is from our first EP. Mm. And it's a very dark, it's probably the darkest track of that EP. And for the most part, one of the darkest tracks uh, that we've ever written, it's quite heavy and gothy. And, but then towards the end, it breaks into a very upbeat uh, reggae section. And uh, I remember before we went on stage, that was, that was my litmus test in some ways. Like, will people come with us? Will the room follow the emotion of the song? Mm. And I remember, you know, it goes from this really dark section and then I emerged from the ground and I started dancing around to the reggae beat and the room followed. Everybody awesome. was just moving with us. Mm -hmm. And that's when I knew that we had a great live show because despite the fact that we're going here and then here and here and then there, the audience comes with us. And uh, yeah, I, I do think we'll have a great time. It, it stops people switching off. It keeps them paying attention. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah, just listening really to like it really is just well. like, you've, you've, got to con you've got to sit there and you've got to concentrate. And if you just look away or just lose your concentration for a second, you miss some key element and you know, that, it's a sign of good music. It's, um, you know, uh, no, well done. Um, Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, keep up the good work, as they say. So when are we likely to expect chapter three? We, well, we are pleased to announce that we will be recording chapter three uh, across uh, January, February this year. Awesome. Um, we have not yet announced uh, title track list or release date but it's not going to be too long before uh, we get uh, to the next uh, part of the story excellent um so have you got any live gigs soon yes our next one is um it's, not... it's a quite um, important gig for us right um, it's going to be on the 5th of March here in Leeds at the Primrose Inn. Uh, now, the Primrose Inn is a place that is extremely dear to us. It's, uh, it's a small venue mm -hmm. and it's um, the venue that will give an opportunity to bands to play. Uh, it's uh, the live shows organized by a local legend uh, doc who once again a genuine lover of music who cares about the bands all the gigs that he puts on are actually charity gigs all the money goes uh, to usually children in need i think um and uh, it's just such a nice open vibe uh, such a wonderful place to play show shows um so we're very much looking forward to that. It did wonders for us when we were first gigging, being able to play there a few times. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, uh, one last thing. I mean, this I find you sent me some USB sticks. I don't know if you can yep. hold, hold it up there. This is quite unique. I've never seen this before from a band. And I think it's a very clever idea, putting all your songs on a little USB stick like that. Um, who came up with that idea? Uh, it was always a bit of a group effort. Um, you, Roger, you, Roger came up with that idea. Was it me? It was you. <laughs> so I, I think it was uh, yeah, the, the original yeah. idea was mine, and then uh, but I wanted them to be these really tiny USB drives that were useless apart from carrying the songs. And uh, Roger was like, "No, we're gonna give people a product that is actually." A good USB drive that can store stuff and uh, that uh, actually has a purpose beyond our uh, beyond us. Um, so well, I, I think I think it's an amazing idea just to have a little USB stick. I mean, there's a lot of money going out in bands paying for CDs and artwork and goodness knows what. And this is, you know, it's a cracking mm -hmm. idea. I think I've, I've been recommending it to other bands I see as well. So we'll it, take off. It feels it feels like a good. Uh, compromise between the old and the new yeah um it's um and it, it's uh it, it allows us to put the music there the artwork there 
the the, the video um yeah, it's cool, right? exactly everything is on uh, on something that is easy to carry and plugs into the devices that we all have just, just a small uh, small note um the usb drives contain the entire ep mm -hmm. but streaming services don't have access to all the tracks so for um, people who don't have a usb drive mm -hmm. and they're just uh, going on spotify or uh, uh, youtube or uh, anything else they'll find only the first three tracks self in solution session with dr michelson and diabolical uh, the fourth one is a usb exclusive mm -hmm. i see that is good marketing I must well, say. and one further one further point of caution as well a friend of mine got in trouble with his wife when she discovered a usb drive with pornographic sunset <laughs> on his desk drawer so it's worth just being upfront with this you know yeah yeah i, I can imagine where, where did the name come from i, I, I don't ask really a drunken rainy night <laughs> yeah i think uh, there was a there was a room and there, there was were wine, there was cheese <laughs> that the, there were oh, paintings of uh, whiskey. <laughs> yeah, there were paintings of uh, sunsets. Uh, there was uh, whiskey. Uh, there was a discussion about Japanese pornography. Uh, there was the need for a band name. There was a, a spreadsheet with uh, a long list of potential names, none of which were satisfactory. And uh, next thing we know, we woke up. And uh, in that painful hangover, we were called Pornographic Sunset. And we couldn't look each other in the eyes after that night. Either. <laughs> we a while. That, that's why Dave is still wearing sunglasses. Yeah, I see. Flash -flash. <laughs> shame. Still in therapy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, on that note, thank you very much for your time. Pornographic Sunset. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you.